Okay. Okay then. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, see, Mr. Bell in the audience is a great way to make me feel not at all nervous before <laughs> presenting. <laughs> Uh, it's great to be here. So I, my name is Adam Spires. I'm a senior software engineer at SUSE, and this is my colleague. Yeah, and my name is Sampath. I'm from NDT. Okay. And uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, high availability for instances and um, what we believe is, is the future of this feature in um, upstream OpenStack. Uh, we've been working on this uh, with a smallish community for quite a while now. Um, so the, these are the findings. So firstly, this is kind of a, a sequel to a talk that um, I gave with another colleague in, in Austin. Um, if you haven't, if you didn't see that one, um, you're very welcome to you know go back to the um, uh, watch the video recording of that. Um, I'm, I'm going to go over some of the same material of that to sort of set the scene for the problem, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, there's a lot more. Well. Uh, a bit more detail in, in that um, talk about the, the, the background um, to this problem. So today, I'm going to quickly um, talk about the difference between HA on the compute plane versus the uh, control plane. I'm going to uh, make a case for why we need HA on the compute plane um, and go through some design goals of what we think the ideal solution looks like talk about uh, some existing technologies, and Sampath is going to um, uh, tell you s some more about uh, one of the solutions that he has been uh, leading and working on. And we'll talk about what we're up to currently and where we think we're going in the future, and we'll also warmly encourage everyone to get involved. So firstly, um, what's the difference between control plane and compute plane HA? So uh, most people are probably familiar with this kind of HA on the control, uh, control plane. It's a pretty standard architecture where you have a, a cluster with all your services running in it, maybe multiple clusters. You can divide up the, um, um, the responsibility of work. For example, have API clusters, a API services in one cluster and um, message queue database in another, for example. Or there's a lot, lots of different possibilities, but essentially it involves some kind of cluster manager um, and which will do automatic restart of controller services and it will um, increase the uptime of your um, control plane on average. And if you look a bit more closely, then you've got you know, typically an HA proxy load balancer. You might have Corusync Pacemaker, maybe Keep Alive D, um, especially if you're doing Neutron L3 HA these days. Um, it's a pre pretty standard practices uh, which are documented in the official HA guide. And I, I should mention that um, that HA guide is actually currently under a lot of flux, and I'm one of the people involved in trying to revamp that and get it back up to date because it does have a number of issues which need sorting out. Um, so this uh, HA on the, on, the, on the control plane is, is pretty much a solved problem mostly. I mean, there's still ongoing work in some areas like um, Neutron and so on, but it's, you know, it's, it's generally pretty well understood. Um, so if your control plane is, is the stuff on the left of this diagram and then it talks to all the compute nodes on the right-hand side, um, then if you have a failure, in the, in the control and in the compute plane, then um, you're not covered by any of the technology that I just mentioned. So in that situation, is, is there a problem that needs solving? Um, and I, I would contend that there is. Um, not, not for every single cloud out there, but, but certainly for some. And we all know the um, pets versus cattle um, metaphor, um, which actually I think I first heard of uh, when, when Tim Bell was presenting it uh, a, long, a long time ago. Um, so yeah, pets, are, I, I won't go into you know, detail because I think everyone knows this, but pets are unique and uh, stateful and they take a lot of work to, to create and look after. Um, cattle aren't unique, um, they're stateless. When something goes wrong, you just um, get another one and replace it. And um, so cattle are basically ideal for the cloud. They're kind of designed um, to be to run cloud native, um, they're naturally resilient and disposable. Um, so if you have a bunch of um, hypervisors in your cloud, and you start populating them with cattle instances, then everything's happy. If one of them blows up, then you you don't panic. You just deploy another one. 
you keep going, you might want to keep scaling your cloud. You might have different types of cattle in different projects, um, and you know, any, any, anything can fail anywhere, but you just keep going and it's all fine. Um, but you, you get to a point where, okay, there's a bit of mess that needs cleaning up um, here, and ideally the application layer will take care of the cleanup. Maybe it talks to the OpenStack APIs and, and cleans things up. Um, but you, or you might have a dumb cattle situation where actually you want the cleanup to be done automatically by the, by the control, play, control plane, by the infrastructure layer. Um, that's it's still not a big problem, uh, but what if, like, for example, a whole compute host fails? Then um, that really is something that needs to be handled by the infrastructure layer because it's not a problem that's specific to any one workload. So, for example, you might want to reboot it at that point and, um, or react in some other way, notify an operator or whatever. Um, so, it, so it's not um, it, a, a big problem when, when failures happen with cattle, but it, you know, it just do, does require some thought. When it gets to pets, the situation is um, uh, quite a bit more complicated because now you have pets scattered around and you can't just, if, if a pet fails for some reason, you can't just redeploy that pet elsewhere without thinking because it has state and that state needs to be protected. So um, you need to make sure that that pet really is dead before you resurrect it somewhere else, otherwise you'll get two copies of the same pet conflicting um, with the same state. Um, and that's where you get the need for things like fencing um, come in to avoid data corruption. So you might want to defend against your failures in, in different ways. Um, well, I'll get onto that in a bit, actually. Uh, but yeah, in this case, if, if uh, a compute host fails, then we need to be very careful before just, we can't just reboot it and then expect everything to magically heal itself. Um, we need to think about the fencing and, and uh, a, a controlled recovery that is context aware. So as a summary, do, does OpenStack really need it? I would say in the, in the general case, yes, we do need um, compute plane HA. And um, the, the quick summary is pretty much the reasons I've just stated. It's not just pets that we need it for. Sometimes we need it for cattle. Um, and despite what some people, uh, I, I think, believe, um, the, there are valid reasons for running pets in OpenStack. Um, there's manage, manageability benefits, all the, the nice ecosystem within OpenStack for managing um, your resources. Um, the, there's no reason that Cattle should be the only thing to benefit from that. Um, otherwise, you, you would have you know, a cloud here for your cattle and then something else over there for your pets. And it, it's uh, not um, a, an economic way of, of handling your estate. And as, as developers, um, we know that it's expensive to migrate, uh, to, to just completely convert a pet-based traditional legacy workload into something that is is cloud aware. So we, we kind of agreed on this as a community, I guess, largely, I mean, um, a while ago. And we wrote this user story, um, and the product, product working group discussed it and, um, and decided that it was one of the higher priority user stories out there. Um, but it didn't really go very far in terms of, like, how do we actually, you know, what, what, how do we respond to this user story and do some implementation? Um, so I'll talk about that um, shortly, but firstly, what do we really want from a solution? Um, so the design goals are, um, at least this is, this is how we, we see it, I think. Yeah. Um, firstly, obviously it has to scale. That's just, that's just a given. And, oh, look, it's... Uh, <laughs> um, so to scale, we, we, um, we seem to come to a consensus that actually one way of scaling that works pretty nicely is if we already have Pacemaker running on the control plane, there's this nice uh, feature called Pacemaker Remote where you can have a remote proxy daemon that runs um, on your compute nodes and kind of forms an annex to the, the control plane. It extends the control plane. You can, you can use Pacemaker um, on the control plane to, to control stuff that's running on the compute nodes. And, because this is not a full mesh hierarchy with all the, com the pacemaker remotes on the compute nodes talking to each other. You only get communication between um, the control plane and individually each um, pacemaker remote. So it does scale. So it's kind of like a, 
I guess, a hub topology. Um, so that's a, a brief um, response to the scalability thing. Um, we want to handle different failure modes, obviously. We want to be able to handle uh, an individual compute host failing. Um, that could be just the OS or the hardware or whatever. Um, it could be a an individual process like libvirt daemon um, on, on a control, uh, on a compute node, sorry, uh, or Nova Compute. Um, or we, we definitely also, of course, want to handle um, failures on the control plane, but like I said earlier, we've sort of addressed that. Um, if we have a recovery workflow controller that is, is responsible for handling failures on the compute plane, then we need to make sure that that itself is resilient. Otherwise, you know, um, we, we, we can land ourselves in a situation where suddenly our complete compute plane is no longer protected. Um, we want to be able to deal with individual VMs failing from a kind of infrastructure as a service um, aspect. What the, we consider out of scope is failures inside the instance. So if there's something wrong with the workload inside the instance, that's not the business of the cloud operator to worry about. That's the business of the consumers of the cloud. So that's the only one of those explosions that we consider out of scope for the rest of this talk. Um, another clear design goal is, is operability. So um, we need to be able to have, uh, as operators, have visibility into what kind of failures are happening in the cloud and what the system is doing to automatically or semi-automatically respond to them. And we also want to have a, like a history and be able to see the history of what failures have happened before. So for example, we can see you know, how many failures are happening on a weekly basis. And is that what we would expect or is it too high? Um, so we need to be able to uh, configure the response to failures in a sort of policy-driven manner. And not every cloud is, is the same shape or has the, the same SLAs or requirements. So for example, um, we might decide that we want to configure the response by availability zone, or we might want to configure the response by, by project, by tenant, um, or by instance flavor, or even by individual pet. If we have a specific pet that needs special treatment in some specific way, we probably want to be able to cope with that. Um, so every cloud is different. Um, there are other things that we might want to configure. We might want to set aside a certain number of compute hosts to be reserved so that we always know if there are failures on other compute hosts that we always have some hosts spare to fail things onto. Um, we might want to configure the retry thresholds um, on, on various operations, uh, recovery operations. Uh, we might even want to go into the, the exact workflow that has been used for recovery and, and customize those. Uh, there are some uh, clouds in production out there that are using some of the existing solutions that we're about to show you. And it was very important for those. I mean, I, for example, I work for SUSE, so obviously we have customers who are using our current implementation of um, compute um, plain HA, and we obviously want to make sure that those customers can be upgraded to a, um, a, an improved solution in the future that's a you know, best of breed upstream solution. And um, similarly yeah. at um, NCT, the, uh, they have you know, production clouds that are using their solution, and um, they, they need to be able to upgrade that to, to an improved version in a smooth manner. And we want uh, a, a, an a recovery workflow controller that is intelligent and context aware. So some examples of that, if Nova Compute fails, but the VMs are still running, the VMs are still healthy, but you just can't control them because Nova, AP, well, Nova can't, from the control plane, can't talk to the compute plane and, and control them. So in that situation, do you want to automatically kill them and recover them elsewhere? Well, if they're kind of disposable cattle, then maybe it's safe to do that uh, as long as it's not you know, too big an impact on the overall service, but if it's pets, then actually you might do more harm than good by, by automatically killing them and trying to restart them elsewhere, because you might cause a, a significant service disruption. So th things like that um, need, to, need to be considered. Um, there's the possibility of having multiple faults occurring at the same time, and then you need something that's intelligent enough to look at all of them and, and think, well, do I handle these as separate things, or are they all related? So I just focus on one of them. 
um, if something goes wrong, then maybe you want to set the compute host to maintenance mode uh, until it's, um, it, it, everything's back up and running. Otherwise, you might try, uh, you might end up with n new instances or, or certain activity happening on that host that, that shouldn't happen. And um, this is um, a use case from the NCT world that they have um, storage boundaries. Do you want to talk about this? Or? Yeah, uh, the basic concept is we use the shared storage for each clusters. So the without shared storage, the evacuation is not going to work as we expected. So uh, we want to define the shared storage boundaries. I think NOAA is still not supporting it, but it will in the future. So that's why we specifically ask for this requirement. Um, obviously, it has to perform. You know, we need a quick response to failures. Um, so if, if you're polling, then you, that might incur an extra latency over pushing. Um, so we uh, thought that you know, using the standard OpenStack model of notifications on the message bus makes sense. Um, and we m might want to um, decide to handle certain faults at a higher priority than, than others. So one example of that is if um, you have a host failing, then it could well generate um, faults at not just the host level, but the instance level. And you don't necessarily want to spend effort trying to recover an instance when you're already trying to recover the whole host that that instance is on. Um, and and if, if there is some reason for delaying a response to a particular fault um, because you've considered it lower priority than another, another one, then obviously the operators need to understand that. Otherwise, they might wonder, why is this instance not being uh, recovered automatically if they didn't realize that there's, there's some good reason for that? Um, and finally, it should go without staying, saying that you know, any, any good upstream best of breed solution should conform to all the OpenStack standards. So the four opens, open source, open design, open development, open community. We very much subscribe to that. Um, so, you know, typically Python, using all the standard libraries like Oslo and so on, um, the, the code should be hosted in the normal OpenStack way with Garrett review and all that, um, and CI, and yeah. So that's the, uh, a whirlwind tour through the design goals of the kind of the direction that we were trying to head when we've th this guided all our um, existing, existing um, work. So, quick um, recap slash intro, if you haven't seen it before, to the uh, open source solutions that we're aware of out there in the community that handle um, Compute Plane HA. Uh, the first one is, is one that I've been uh, involved with for quite a while, and it's, it's the solution that is used um, by um, the product I work on, SUSE OpenStack Cloud, but also the, um, uh, the Red Hat product as well. Um, they, they take a very similar approach um, and we, we share code between them and we, we collaborated on um, patches and, and so on. Um, and so this is, um, if, if this is like the, the kind of typical um, template for an architecture for these solutions uh, where you have the recovery workflow controller with some kind of state tracking um, what's going on so that it can be an intelli make intelligent decisions, then that lives in the control plane. And then, like I said, we have pacemaker in the control plane and pacemaker, uh, pacemaker remote in the compute plane um, for actually controlling what goes on in, in the compute plane. So in this particular solution, um, it looks like this. So actually, the recovery workflow controller lives effectively inside pacemaker itself. Um, so the, the state is tracked in pacemaker and we have these um, two components. Um, Nova Evacuate is effectively the recovery uh, workflow controller that, that takes care of executing a Nova Evacuate command, which resurrects um, instances onto a new compute node once the old one has failed. Um, and then we have this dedicated fence compute uh, fencing agent, which is responsible for um, flagging to the Nova Evacuate process that some, some cleanup uh, recovery work needs to be done. Um, I, I'll maybe go into slightly more detail on this if we have time later on. Um, so th this solution um, 
handles the, the following types of failures. So it handles the, the big explosion on the left there, um, which is your um, uh, first, uh, the, the whole compute host blowing up. And it ha handles uh, failures of individual processes in terms of trying to restart them if, if they crash for some reason. Um, it does not han handle failures of individual instances, so that is a weakness. Uh, oh yeah, I just mentioned, I'm, so th this is a video demo which we don't have time to play here, but I've included it in the slides and the, you know, these slides are online. The QR code was shown at the beginning, I'll show it again at the end. So um, you, you can, if you're more interested, interested in more details on this particular solution, this is a YouTube video that you can watch to just get a quick overview of you know, how, how it works. Um, and so a quick summary of that, um, you know, this is a, a working solution, has been for, I guess, over a year now, um, or more. Uh, there's commercial support from SUSE and Red Hat, maybe from others, I'm not sure. Um, and the, the, the code is, is upstream, um, but like I said, it, it doesn't handle uh, failures of VMs and th there's a few other corner cases that are problematic. Um, they're you know, limitations of the design rather than, rather than actual bugs. Um, and so, yep. hand over to, to explain the next solution, which is called Masakari. Yep, so the Masakari project is uh, what we use in production in the NTT. So it's pretty much the same architecture, but we have take out the recovery, for, recovery flow for external, as an external service. So uh, this is a kind of a rough diagram how the Masakari looks like. The Masakari itself consists with the Masakari API and the Masakari engine. And the, we use the pacemaker for the control plane, HA, and the, we also use the pacemaker remote in the compute nodes. But it's, it is not, we support default, Masakari defaultly support the pacemaker, but you may configure it with the console or any other HA solution you have, it's very, uh, the flexible solution. So, uh, besides the Masakari main project, we have another sub project called Masakari Monitors. And in default, we support three types of monitors. The first one is the, the host monitor, which monitors the host failures. And the second one is the process monitor, which is uh, looking for the, any process failures, such as Nova Compute Fail or Liberty Failed or any other, like Iskaji Daemon, Multiplot. So such kind of important process get failed, it will uh, uh, try to send the notification to the Masakari API. The third one is the, uh, the instance monitor, which use the Libbar API to monitor the VMs, individual VMs. And then the no those notifications will send to the Masakari API, then it will take some in intelligent decisions based on the rules, and it passed to the Masakari engine to do the actual recovery. So uh, currently we have, uh, only we have the task flow recovery driver and it has uh, three main recovery workflows for in instance failures and VM failures and host failures. And, and also we have another project called a Python Masakari client which is give you a nice CLI to configure and control everything in the, the Masakari the workflows and the configurations and the uh, the, the boundaries for the failovers. And uh, this is an example for the process failure. The, we have process monitor each of, on each compute node which is looking for the process failures. If it detect any process failure, it will try to restart the process in several times. Uh, and even if it get failed to restart the process and uh, work it properly, it will alert to the Masakari API and then it goes to the Masakari engine and the end result is it will disable the NOAA service on that particular compute node. And the second one is the, uh, the instance monitor. Uh, we use the Libert API, Libert API to monitor the instance ac activities of the instance such as like uh, the freezing IO, so any other the bad things happen in the VM. So it's monitor the VM externally and it will try to uh, get some alert from the Libert API. And if it finds something, it will alert to the Masakari API by sending a notification. And then it's go to the Masakari engine. 
and it will execute the, uh, the instance failure workflow to recover the instance. The eventually what it does is it stop and start the VM and that will uh, hopefully recover the instance from the failure. And the third one is the node failure scenario. And if some nodes goes down, it will detect by the other nodes in the cluster. So th this is, uh, we use Pacemaker Remote to uh, detect those failures. And the, we have the uh, host monitor, which is uh, uh, connected to the Pacemaker Remote, and it will alert the Mascari API, and it will get reduced the reduct the, the same notifications coming from each and every host and it will aggregate its one notification and it will hand over to the host failure workflow. And what it does is, is evacuate all the VM to, to uh, the healthy host in the, uh, in the cluster. So in here, we, in Masakari, we support uh, four types of uh, the evacuation patterns. The first one is the, we use the Nova scheduler to select the particular host for the evacuates destination. And the second type is we use the reserved host. So first of all, you have to configure the Masakari with some reserved host. Like, a, it's an example, you have 10 computer nodes and you can put another computer node as a reserved host that it will use to uh, as evacuate destination for the failure host. And the third and fourth patterns are the hybrid of those. Like first use the Nova X scheduler. If it fails, then go to the reserved host. And the fourth one is the opposite of the, the priority. And about Masakari, uh, I think uh, we started this project as a GitHub project, pro project in the, like uh, two and a half years ago. Now it's under the OpenStack namespace. So you may find the most details, everything details in the Masakari wiki. And the current stable release is stable Okota, and Masakari team done a pretty much good job, job to enhance the, the recovery engine to support the customer stable recovery patterns. And we also have the retry failure recovery workflows, and the, the, the most huge, part, huge work has been done with the bringing it up to the OpenStack standards. So if you take a look at the code, it's pretty much clean, and very much understandable right now. Yeah. Thank you. And, and by the way, um, the, there are quite a few links on this presentation. So, you know, when you go to visit it on, it's, it's just a website. So you can just, you know, go through and follow any of the links to any of the information that interests you, uh, including these two links here. Um, so that there is one more uh, sort of upstream open source solution. Um, which um, sort of started off as a, a proof of concept and um, proved itself, um, but hasn't really been taken too much further recently. Um, and it's based on Mistral, which if you haven't come across the Mistral project, it's um, a workflow as a service uh, project. So in this particular case, um, uh, e even though you know, any user can make any workflows for any, any use case, um, in this particular case, uh, obviously we're interested in workflows um, revolving around recovery of uh, failures on the compute plane. So this example here of this workflow is, is what you would do if um, a host fails. So you, you look to see which VMs are on that host, um, decide which ones you want to recover through some filter optionally, and then, and then do the recovery. Um, and yeah, that's the GitHub repository for that if anyone wants to look at it. Okay, so those are the, those are kind of three, um, you know, upstream open source uh, solutions to this. There are other proprietary ones as well, but we're not focusing on those in this talk. Um, here's a, a quick comparison of the the first two, and then the third column is is what we're aiming towards. Um, now, I'm definitely not going to go through all the details of this matrix right now, um, but I just you know want to point out the the most obvious thing, which is that. Um, Masakari has a lot of very nice features. It ticks almost all the boxes that we want. Um, the, the one area where we, the, the, the OCF-based solution is, is maybe slightly more elegant is in the host and process monitoring, um, which is done natively through Pacemaker, and that is what Pacemaker was designed for yeah. um, originally. So the, the idea is to basically combine the two of those and get this best-of-breed solution, which really 
ticks pretty much all the boxes, um, uh, or at least a lot of them in the, in the short term. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, we've been discussing it for quite a long time, actually, um, over several design summits and so on. Um, and we decided to the, a kind of divide and conquer approach is, is what is needed, really. Um, so we d decided to split it up into key areas. So for example, host monitoring, host recovery, um, VM monitoring, VM recovery, process monitoring, process recovery. And we thought, OK, if we can tackle these independently and build them in a modular way, then anyone can implement any one of those components in whatever way they want, and it will still interface with all the others. So people can kind of do a mix and match approach to building whatever they want. And that will also give us a nice, smooth upgrade path. Um, so there's the gory details on that etherpad um, going back to Newton Design Summit. Um, it, I can't promise how much sense that etherpad will make to you, but <laughs> if you want to look, it's there. Um, but so what we, we did after a, a, um, a lot of discussion is we started writing some specs. Um, and, and to be honest, you know, the, the specs are kind of still in process. We haven't necessarily, like, there's, there's still a bit more knowledge in our, in our heads from all our yep. discussions. So we've had weekly IRC meetings and so on, and you can, you know, read the logs of those as well. Um, so the specs is not, not a completely up-to-date, faithful representation of where we are uh, right now. In fact, this talk is probably the first time that we've exposed uh, um, all of this thinking um, publicly. So we'll try and do a better job there. But the respects for um, you know, the, those areas that, that I just mentioned. Um, we, we also, we haven't written these yet, but we do want specs for um, writing some other resource agents as well. Um, OK, so this is like, that was all the preamble of the talk. And this is kind of the interesting bit, or at least I hope it's interesting. Um, so the, the OCF resource agent solution, which was the first of the, um, the three solutions that we just mentioned, um, looks like this. This is a, pretty much the same diagram as before, but just rearranged and not as colorful. But don't worry, the colors will come in a second. Um, so you have the, um, the state in Pacemaker. I apologize for the, the small text, by the way. Um, but again, you can look at these slides afterwards. Um, so the, the state here is, is only uh, of the recovery of like the failures and the recovery. It only lives within Pacemaker. Um, and the dividing line across the bottom there is in between monitoring and recovery. So that corresponds to the modular approach that we're trying to take. Uh, as, um, and, and you can see, so the, this existing solution wasn't a kind of elegant separation of those two things because you have the Nova Evacuate um, uh, process that is kind of straddling the two. And um, yeah, that's how it looks. And then um, th this is where it starts to get interesting. So the way we want to change this is that we want to retire the Nova Evacuate resource agent. And we want to replace it by this more capable thing that I've somewhat arbitrarily called Nova Host Alerter. Um, which is a, another resource agent, but it's capable of alerting. So its responsibility is, 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 for, is not relating to recovery at all. It's just the monitoring side of things. Uh, it's only responsible for passing the failures onto a system that is able to, to do some kind of recovery. And um, we're aiming for um, a, a driver-based approach to that, so it can talk to Masakari. It can send out arbitrarily um, uh, but HTTP, you know, like just a, a kind of, chances, yeah, yeah, like a, a rest type, you know, message um, to, um, to, to whatever HTTP endpoint is, is out there that, that wants to consume it. Um, and so with this, um, and with maybe some small modification of the, the two existing other components there in yellow, um, we can start to make the architecture a lot cleaner. And this also offers really quite a nice upgrade path from existing solutions. Because, um, for example, in, if, if, if one of my customers who's running SUSE OpenStack Cloud has the um, components running on the left, um, what we can do in the upgrade path is to add a resource agent into the cluster for the Nova host <coughs> alerter. And it's still running Nova Evacuate. And then all we need to do for the cutover is to literally just stop the Nova Evacuate resource and start the Nova Host Alerter resource. 
and then suddenly the responsibility for doing the recovery of failed compute hosts is handed over, um, and th there's no, you know, there's no impact to the control plane or the compute plane in, in downtime of any services. Um, so we were quite excited when we when we came up with that um, approach, and it is a, a bit more flexible again because if we bring back in um, a, a solution to recovery based on Mistral, for example, like the, the the proof of concept thing that I mentioned earlier, um, we have you know, this similar mechanism where Pacemaker um, uses a custom fencing agent on, on the left called Fence Evacuate that delivers the signal to Mistral to initiate the recovery workflow. And um, we could reuse that um, even like either directly from the Nova host alerter or by using Masakari with a, a new driver that implements um, recovery workflows through Mistral instead of um, what it's currently doing, which is the uh, driver for using task flow. So the stuff in red hopefully goes away. The stuff in green appears, everything else. Uh, and then the stuff in yellow you know, gets modified and everything else stays the same. So it, it's really, in terms of code changes from where we are now, from both sides, from the, like, the SUSE Red Hat side and from the NTT side, and whoever else out there is using these upstream solutions is, is, is really quite a minor um, shift, but it, it, um, it delivers pretty much what we, what we need. Um, incidentally, th this diagram is, is focusing on mainly on host recovery, but a similar um, kind of a, approach applies to everything For else. For the process and the VM recovery, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we're are we close to time. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, we'll just wrap up. Um, so I, I've been working on packaging uh, Masakari in the upstream, the RPM packaging project. That's now almost completed. Just got to finish off the Masakari monitors thing, but the other two packages emerged. So uh, any RPM-based um, distro should benefit from that. Um, then the next thing is to integrate the, this new Nova Host Alerter approach, um, update the specs so that anyone reading those doesn't um, you know, gets the latest details, um, and then yeah, the the future work for Masakari like uh, we still need to write a lot of documentation, and right now we are on it, and we have some uh, the documentation under review, and we will keep continue working on documentation, and we have another spec for recovery method customization that is for like you can actually customize the recovery method on your needs, so. Uh, I'll skip the, the, the details, but yeah. And the one other thing is we going, uh, we will try to implement the backend driver for Mistrial. And the another very cool feature is uh, we are thinking about is the having the ironic support for the volume booted ironic instance, making it highly available to as it's kind of a similar workflow. And we also looking forward to getting in the big tent because it's uh, it's very pretty much important thing for our users to get ensure this project still maintained and yeah. <laughs> stayed in good hands. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. It's also yeah, and there's a, a, another little, uh, there's a, a few improvements that can be made on the Nova side, um, which I was talking to one of the, the Nova guys yesterday about, um, which, uh, and I think some of this is already in the pipeline um, for exposing the uh, uh, more details of the recovery process as it happens. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to get involved, then please do. Uh, we have the dedicated H OpenStack HAIRC channel. Um, if you post anything HA related to OpenStack Dev or any of the other OpenStack mailing lists, please do include the HA badge on it so that people like myself are filtering <laughs> the huge fire hose of, of traffic for HA can... Um, can, can spot that stuff. Uh, we have the weekly IRC me meetings that everyone's very welcome to. Um, there's, yeah, the Launchpad project there. Um, there's a similar one, launchpad.net slash Masakari, right? Yep. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, like I said, the HA guide we're working on. Um, please bear with us. There's stuff that needs fixing there. And yeah, please get involved. Yeah. And um, there again is the QR code and the, the URL that everything you just saw is available from there, including hyperlinks. And um, that's it. I think, were we, were we out of time? Or do we have time for questions? We're, 
we're, I think we're out of time. So, uh, uh, yeah, please, uh, yeah. Yeah, so thanks very much. Uh, you and know, uh, please. one more thing, we have yeah. another forum session day after tomorrow. Oh, yeah, right, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not about the, the, just not about the company. It is the whole thing about the OpenStack HA. Any topic is welcome. Yeah. Like the, the Neutron HA, Cinda HA, yeah. or the Control Plan HA. So like birds of a feather for HA, and that's yeah. Thursday at what time? Uh, I don't remember. Does anyone <laughs> know offhand? It's like, I think, I think it's, it's Thursday morning. Morning, yes. Yeah. So it's like 11 to 11. It's, part, it's part of the forum. Right? Yeah, it's part of the yeah, forum. So please so. come to that if you want to talk some more. And of course, you can um, ask questions. You know, just come up afterwards and I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.